Amen. Go for your advice. The shit in the bank goes wrong, you're probably gonna have to kill somebody to get out. Security guard, woman, maybe even a kid. Are you 12? I'm 16. Don't flinch. Hello and welcome to this, the latest Green One interview. And today we are joined by Julian Moore Cook, who is the star of Blonde Purple, which came out earlier this week. Um, so uh, welcome to the interview here, Julian. Thank you for joining us. Um, safely home in Ireland, I believe, at the moment. Yes. Yeah, back in Ireland. Uh, I flew back on, um, when was it, about a week ago. So I've been touring around Ireland with a friend who's a musician um and yeah we've been going all around uh the country sounds like it sounds like great fun sounds yeah. like absolutely great fun um so um for those of you watching who have seen blonde purple much like ellie um you're probably wondering why uh why julian doesn't have an american accent well that's called acting everybody um and he, what a great job he did during the film so do you want to tell us about your character in blonde purple um and all about it yeah, I mean, um, yeah, my character, uh, you know, he, he, you find out his name later in the in the piece, so I won't give us, he's, he's sort of known as Mr. You at the start. And um, yeah, he's kind of a, a mixed up guy and you, you don't really know if he's good or, or, or a bad person. And he gets caught up in something that is way over his head, like w completely, you know, out of his depth, um, you know, involved in a heist. And it would be, I think it honestly would be equivalent to, any of us getting involved in, in a high stakes heist, just complete panic. Um, you know, it's not his run of the mill. And it's about his relationship, you know, with the person he's got hostage. Uh, he's taken hostage in a desperate attempt. Um, and yeah, how that develops. Uh, yeah. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because without revealing too much, I mean, it's in the trailer. So your hostage is 16 years old. So, um, even though Ellie isn't, but the, the hostage in the story is 16 years old. So when, when you were looking at the script, how did you kind of process that and kind of go, you know, because it's not straightforward material, is it really? No, I mean, yeah, I, th I think like, you know, that's, I think, you know, the, the great thing about the script and when, and when I was watching it and what appealed is like, there's so many points where this character makes a choice, you know what I mean? And sometimes you're just like that is the wrong choice to do or sometimes you might you empathize and you go yeah i can see how i get way there now the decision to take a 16 year old as a hostage is like sheer desperation you know what i mean and, and panic and um it reminded me of there's a scene in heat where he takes you know he's they're running away from the cops that big that famous shootout scene and he, and he grabs the girl you know what i mean and it's not even a big thing you know what i mean but he just in a moment grabs this little girl while the police are chasing him and shooting him and it's just like that decision, it just reminded me of that, to, to make that decision so cold, callous, um, and like getting in the mind of someone who's willing to do that uh, and why. It's just so fascinating. Now, you have an awful lot of monologues in this film. There's a lot of scenes that just you, the camera on just you. Um, that must have been great to do, but also was that must have been somewhat of a task to learn all your lines and get all the... How many yeah. takes were you doing per... I mean, you know, the, the thing the thing with the film and, you know, is like as much as you'd love to show up there, I'm a big person on knowing the lines, like, and as much as I'd love to show up on set and, um, you know, do a load of takes and I'll get it, I'll get it. Like, I'm not going to do the best performance if I don't. So my first job always as an actor is I learn those lines that like they're burned into my head. So I spent weeks in my kitchen. It's funny, I was sitting in my house, in my kitchen, my housemate thought I was absolutely mental. You know, I'd be in the back shouting and, and as you've seen the film, like there's a lot of intense yeah. stuff and just I like to stand and walk around so I learned all the monologues and it's hard with a monologue because you know it's only at very epic moments in our lives have we ever ran off on one long speech you know normal day-to-day -day chats you me you me and it's making each and one of those interesting understanding the need to speak and why he has to say these words why they have to come and also as well you know making sure that they're not the same and that they're different and you know each reason to speak for that long comes from a real sense of purpose and truth within them. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a welcome challenge. Like I loved it. It's also quite an emotional roller coaster for you as well, for your, sorry, for your character. Um, so again, to, is, is that quite draining? I mean, I know it's part of the process, but is it quite draining? Like you get home after, you know, shooting and you're like, Oh, yeah. how yeah. is that? Yeah. It's, it's knackering. It's absolutely, you know, <laughs> I'd love to be the big man and be like, Oh no, no, it's absolutely. But honestly, like, every night we went, cause we we're filming all day, you know, and every night went home and everyone I think did. And 
you just crash out. Like I, I, I had some of the best sleeps in my life doing that job. Like I, I'd keep acting just to get sleeps like that. Like I was at like a comatose and then um, by the end of the job, it was just before Christmas we finished, you know, and I was just like this on the couch oh, all Christmas. Um, so yeah, it, it takes a lot, but it, it's, that's the joy of it. Like who doesn't want to try hard at what they do? Yeah. Was it hard not to take the character home with you or did you end up taking the character? Um, I, I don't really, I, the funny thing is, I think I use acting as a bit of, a bit of therapy. Like, and mm. you know, I, 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 and when I look at a script, you know, I'm always relating to the things in my life that I completely identify and I want to work through. So the funny thing is, you know, usually, usually when I do a job like that, it's like, I've worked through some of my own issues by the end of it. And I actually feel like <laughs> I've taken, do you know what I mean? I've got a load off my chest, you know, in, in that you see a lot of sadness, a lot of anger. And, you know, I was tapping into my own and, to get to express that, I kind of feel like oh, I get to leave that on the set and I've, I've learned something about myself. It's amazing. So the film is now out. It came out on Monday. It's available on digital. What has the response been um, for yeah. you? Because um, I know some of the others have, you know, uh, constantly on social media because you're not really on social media, are you? No, so I'm not. what has the response been like for you? Yeah, it's been, I don't really, you know, I don't really go on, on, online and, and stuff like that. Like I kind of stay away from it, but you know, I keep getting people messaging me and, you know, saying really, really lovely things and, you know, actors, friends, family. I, I watched it. I'd seen it before, but I watched it with this friend, Connor White, who I'm touring around mm-hmm. Ireland. He's a fantastic musician, by the way. Um, and <laughs> we'll put his stuff in the, in yeah, the description. Yeah, definitely. Um, you wouldn't, you won't be, um, Sad about it, but um fingers walk the darkness down, mind is on the midnight. Gather up the gold you found, you fool, it's only moonlight. And if you try to take it home, your hands will turn to butter. Better leave this dream alone. Try to find another. we watched it together and you know he was just really you know it really moved him and that was nice to see and and then I talked to you know people who are interviewing me and and when I see them excited and that they've got some of the film it makes me really happy you know so um the response has been good now um everyone from the cast and stuff we're in a wee whatsapp group they all are really happy and Marcus is over the moon so I feel like we've done our job you know and people are getting something out of it I think it's pretty incredible. I mean, the, the film is great. Um, and people make sure you read the review, which I'll also link down here. Um, it, it's, it's just a really good film. And, you, you know, sometimes you have to sort of step outside yourself and go, this isn't an American made movie. This is British, um, you know, and everything from the set. There's, there's only one thing in the film that made me go, ah, and that was the, that was the subway train across the bridge. Yeah. And it, Cause I know where that was filmed. Oh, <laughs> so, you do. so I knew what, where that was um so uh but it, it you do it, it feels like one of these big big american thrillers um yeah. and it's not but it is big you know it's just not an american thriller so so well done to you all i mean you know um it is fabulous so with that in mind where are we going to be able to see you next that's that's the most important thing Jeez, i mean i don't know what i i would have to say you know that isn't a test test with the marcus on that film you know because mm. i watched it again there i thought you know for what he's done it on and like, the, you know what I mean? And where we, and the, how limited he was and what he was able to resource and stuff like that. It, it looks fantastic, you know what I mean? Like mm. it really does, it sits up there, you know? Yeah. Um, in terms of what I'm doing next, I, I'm doing a lot. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say that I'm doing. Um, I really, cause I tell you, you know, I'm, I'm actually here as well filming in Ireland, but I, I know I'm not allowed to say that as they're telling me every day. Um, but there will be, you know, in the next year, there'll be a lot of TV uh, and film coming out. I've got a film, an Irish film coming out actually called that I am allowed to talk about called Bally Walter, um, right. and it's called it's uh, got Paddy Kilty, who's a comedian yep. from up in the north, um, and I think that's going to be a brilliant film. Um, I, I, the script's lovely. It was really heart, heartwarming and touching. Um, Paddy was brilliant, like you know, a really good actor. You know, considering you know, he, like he would always be like, I'm a stand up, I'm a stand up, but he blew all the actors away. Like so, that'll be definitely worth a watch. Um, but yeah, don't know what else I'm allowed to say. <laughs> but you are, but you are busy though. That's that's I'm busy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
filming in Ireland on a secret project, that would almost sound like you were doing a Game of Thrones prequel. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but even if you were, you couldn't tell us. I so, couldn't say anything. Yeah, they, yeah uh, whatever it was would be upset about it. But which yeah. is annoying. I'm sure at the honest, I'm sure, you know, it's just you're always scared as an actor. I think anytime you're doing a job, you're like, I'm going to get fired for this for some reason. It's that imposter syndrome. Like, and you're trying to be on your best behavior. I'm trying to be on my best behavior just not to get that happen. Uh, so, yeah. Is it quite hard not being able to tell people stuff like that? Um, I, do you know, I'm not. I just, I, I tell my very closest, you know what I mean, people. Yeah. Really, and because I'm not on social media, I just, I don't, and maybe I need to get better at that. Like, you know, I thought that with this film, like I was so proud of it. And I thought, gosh, I've got no way of telling people that this is, yeah. you know, I put it on my Facebook, which is private. It's only a few people who actually wouldn't really personally know me on there. I thought, oh, it's kind of a shame that I don't have like a bit of an audience to tell people you need to watch this because it's good, but I'm just not the talent. I, I prefer, I, I, so many times people text, like even this, my friend was telling me off, my very good friend of mine, she was saying, she was like, I sent her the trailer and said, oh, by the way, this is out today. And she was like, how have you not told me that this has been coming out this whole time? You know, and I don't know, I don't know what, what that is, a bit private. I don't know. You need to find someone to run pages for you. So then oh, but, you, yeah. they can do it for you. Well, you know, that's what all these people do these days. You know, they find, they find people to run it for them. It's a um, it's for someone to be able to do those pages and stuff. I admire it. Like, yeah, it's. I, I think. I think it almost becomes part of the job. It's not only you know doing the acting. It's part of the promotion now. I think you know most people these days. So it's it's you know it, it, it's quite well, it's quite refreshing actually to find somebody who's not on social media. But um, you know, in your position, I think you know going down the road at some point you'll probably have to make that decision. Or if you get you know certain agents, or they'll probably do it for you. Just yeah. take them. Uh, that's what it is is it just you don't you can't be bothered with it you never really bothered with it or which is it is it just you're not oh, with it? um i just uh yeah i just don't really i just find it a bit of a distraction from the real i don't know you know i found it a bit of a distraction in the real world i kind of think like i'm looking at the screen a lot and it's an augmented oh, that's gonna sound so out there friggin you know <laughs> i just feel like it's an augmented reality you know what i mean yeah. I think you can see a lot of stuff on there that might make you upset and affect your mental health. And actually, if you put it down, um, you realize the world is not as, you know what I mean? And yeah, um, maybe that's my own, my own <laughs> issues. No, that's fine. So, so what do you do with your spell when you're not acting? What, what is it that Julian Moore Cook does with his spare time other than touring with his musician friends? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I like boxing. I like uh, Muay Thai. Oh. I do that. Uh, I've really gotten into that this year. Um, you know, I'm a fan of basketball. I'm, I'm a Toronto Raptors fan. Um, yeah, uh, staying in shape, reading. I like to go to gigs. I like to go to art exhibitions. I like to try and stay inspired, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy, so I often go to open mic nights and stuff like that. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, just try and fall in love with art, really, I guess. Um, you know, yeah. Not that I'm, you know, Mr. Mr. Wholesome, like I get up to <laughs> plenty of trouble with myself. Uh, <laughs> we don't need to know about their family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but that, that's great. Um, and it's, it's fantastic we've had you on. Um, and I I'd you. just like to remind everybody that Blonde Purple is out now on streaming. You can get hold of it now. Make sure you do keep an eye out for where Julian pops up next. And um, we will see you very shortly on the Screen One interview. Thank you and goodbye. Cheers, thanks. Thanks so much, man. Did you come here to be a murderer? I thought you came here to rob a bank. You gotta be in this. Do you really want to kill a little girl? Ain't my fault. Is that why you came here today? No, no, this is my fault. No, 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 don't, don't. She's not the one.